Trevor Ewart is a musician turned carver. His blank canvas is a fallen tree or a pile of firewood, or the wood most people would toss aside. A piece of wood can be any number of things, uh, you know, a violin or a bow or a lovely cutting serving board. Just watching my father working away in the workshop and, you know, producing his first few violins. And that was a great inspiration and a great learning process uh, for me. It gave me a deep appreciation of wood and the work that goes into producing objects out of that material. Lately, Trevor has put the bow carving aside to make one-of-a-kind cutting and serving boards, each one with its own distinct personality. What's so lovely about them, they're local and they're unique, and they have such a versatility. He called them baguette boards, charcuterie boards, but we put pizza on it, we put bruschetta on it. There's really nothing that you can't put on these mm -hmm. boards. I go to pallet mills and places where the rejected, uh, unloved wood goes to be made into pallets and skids for moving loads of bricks and things. Oftentimes that wood is not of what we would consider furniture grade quality, that is free from knots and free from defects. But I buy it at a very good price, and the defects actually become the features. The knots also tell stories. They become conversation pieces in the kitchen, part of distinctive wood sculptures that make them special, like a violin. This one, actually, this particular board has lots of curl in it. Uh, somewhat unusual, you can see the candle flame, very much like a violin back, in fact. You can see the, the sort of stripes that are going down the violin. I still identify myself as a bow maker, so, you know, sometimes when I answer the phone, Trevor, you were a bow maker here, or no, sorry, it's Once Upon a Tree cutting boards. Uh, yeah, how can I help you? It seemed that suddenly I was making cutting boards and holes full time, and, and the bow making had, you know, arced on its uh, downward spiral. Trevor's unique wood turned pieces have found a home at Jill's table, which can't keep them in stock. Everybody knows that Jill's is the place in, in southwestern Ontario. It's the kitchen store. And it doesn't matter if it's, you know, bigger kitchen stores or bigger markets. Everybody knows Jill and has a deep uh, respect. She sells hundreds, some long enough to be a center serving piece stretching down a dinner table. From Once Upon a Tree's Carver? Or is he a maker of instruments? I think craftsmen probably in both my music, in my violin playing, mm -hmm. and in my bow making and wood turning work that I do, I hold the craft at the highest level. I usually buy about 4,000 board feet of wood, and that's about enough for 4,000 cutting boards. But I try to make pieces that are that will be useful, and I can imagine, you know, the Muskoka cottages that might uh, might house one of my cutting boards, or or a bowl, you know, on a, on a beautiful. Thanksgiving dinner. People are very drawn to wood because of the, the natural quality of it and the fact that there are no two alike is very mm -hmm. special. That also goes for the bowls. Some made from ambrosia maple or silver birch. Each one an affordable work of art with music running through its veins. I make an awful lot of them I should say but Every day, you know, there's at least a few boards that I think, these are really nice, and mm -hmm. it gives me satisfaction that way. 